And um, I just wanted to say, you know, welcome. We are so excited to have you here. We also have Kevin Didoli, who is our incoming um, NAJA board president. And I know he wanted to say a couple words to welcome you as well. So I'll turn it over to Kevin. Hello and welcome new members. I'm really excited that you're here. Um, I also wanna welcome you on behalf of Renee, our current president, who is on a very well-deserved vacation. And she sends a, a warm welcome and hello. Um, I've been part of this organization since the early 90s. And I'm really excited to be the next president. Um, I have a background in watercolor, oil, acrylic, almost all the mediums, and uh, a vast background in teaching. Um, however, now at this point in my life, I'm excited to be here to represent you. I think you're going to be really pleased being a member here. And I encourage you to keep um, reading the newsletters and checking the website because we've got all kinds of great stuff coming down the pike. Um, it's really going to be an exciting year, I think. Um, I think that's all I have to say. And I'm going to give it back to Amanda and you're in great hands with Amanda. Welcome. I'm really happy you've joined us. Thank you so much, Kevin. Um, so I'm going to start um, sharing my screen, but as you will quickly learn at the NHAA, our members are really our lifeblood. We, um, you know, everything we do is around, I'm sorry about my email here. Um, everything we do is really for you. Um, and providing exhibition opportunities and um, helping you grow your artistic careers. That's what we're all about here. Um, and we're always growing and looking for more and better ways to serve you. Um, now, I want to make sure that everyone can see my screen, can see, can see me. Um, yes. Okay, good. Yep. So everyone, you know, you already came to the gallery, so you know what the front looks like because you went through the jury process with dropping everything off. But this is a shot of that. And um, just to quickly go over our agenda, I'm going to, you know, I want to keep it, I want to give you all the information that you need, but not have it be so in depth that you're, you know, unsure how to, how you're going to be able to jump in. So we'll, we'll cover as much as we can. But like I said before, we are always here for you to answer any questions and to help you through the process. Um, so these are some fun shots of, of uh, our gallery and the different in the different exhibitions that we've had um, recently. And, you know, again, like we are all about contemporary regional artists giving you opportunities um, and resources. So um, we're going to go through some of that as we go on, but education classes. So we've started a, a Zoom library of different recordings of little classes that we've put together. We have one up um, coming up on May 12th, which is called All About Art Fairs. And that's going to be um, you know, a panel of NHAA artists facilitated by me where we're going to go over some details on you know, how to be successful vending at various art fairs. Um, and we're always, you know, adding to that to that library. Um, we also have, um, you know, we really want to help grow your career. So whether you're coming to us as an emerging artist, a mid-career artist, or an established artist, we have opportunities for you. Um, one of the big benefits and one of the major reasons why most of our members have said they wanted to join us was to be able to exhibit, you know, there, and um, we're, we have our main gallery, which is in downtown Portsmouth. And then we also have our website, which is a great sales tool, especially if you don't have your own website um, for all of our exhibitions, including at our satellite galleries, we list all of the artwork on our website. Um, and then that creates a link for you to be able to share to, via email or via your um, social media to help promote yourself. Um, we have several satellite locations. Um, 
and and growing. So right now we have Manchester, Dover, the Chamber of Commerce in Concord, and we're going to be releasing a new opportunity, which you all can jump in on um, at LaBelle Winery in Derry. Um, and we also offer the opportunity to rent a wall or an entire gallery so you can have your, your first or maybe, you know, one of many solo exhibitions um, or collaborate with a few other artists to have a small group exhibition. We also have our small works gallery, which is um, currently year round. And um, whenever we have any opportunities like an open juried exhibition, um, we have discounted rates for, for you to participate in those. Um, and same thing with our education classes. Um, and, you know, what I see as one of your biggest benefits is the NAJA staff and team, because we are all here to help support you and answer any questions you have, give you advice. Um, we're, we're kind of like art concierge, I like to say. Um, and, in, and in return, we have some responsibilities that we ask of you. So um, paying your your membership dues, that's an important one. Um, and we'll, I'll show you some information on how to do that. But the important thing to note is once you become an NHAA member, as you all have, um, we, in order to remain a member, you need to have your membership dues paid um, on an annual basis. And if you do have a lapse, we allow one lapse within a five-year period. And that lapse can be no longer than three years. So all of this information is located on our member portal, which I will show you. And it's kind of, you know, it gets a little specific, but it is part of our bylaws as a nonprofit organization. Um, so I do like to point that out to you. Um, and then the other thing is we ask you to volunteer and we have lots of fun ways to get involved, to get involved and to volunteer. It can be through gallery sitting at one of our exhibitions, but we're also open to your expertise. We've had some new members join who are really handy and they wanted, they have helped us with refurbishing our pedestals and um, they've helped by, you know, jumping in to help with painting projects. You can join the hanging committee, which is an amazing group of individuals who help us during every exhibition to arrange and hang our, all of our shows. So there's lots of different ways to get um, involved in terms of the volunteering. And you can also feel free to reach out to me and say, hey, I've got this idea. I want to do this thing. And then that, you know, we can we can talk about that and figure out, um, you know, how to make take advantage of that for both of us. And so I want to break up the different types of exhibitions we have, because once you once you get a little bit more familiar you'll hear all these terms that we use, such as members, open juried, things like that. So I put together a few slides for you to um, break down the different types of exhibitions that we have. Um, and this is important to read when you're looking through the prospectus. Um, so in the prospectus, it'll say whether it's a member exhibition or juried or, or whatnot, medium specific. So here we have member, uh, this is the member exhibitions. And so there's no juror for this, which means most of the time we ask you for one to two pieces, occasionally we'll ask you for three, especially at our end of the year Christmas shows. Um, but when you submit your pieces, they are accepted. So when, when you submit, you should think about your framing, how you want to present it, and have a lot of those things in place because the drop-off time for those comes up pretty quickly versus a juried exhibition where we have a little bit more lead time on those because we want to, we'll notify the artist whether or not you are accepted. And if any of this is confusing or if I'm going too quickly or you'd like more details, please stop me and chime in. I'm happy to answer questions as we go along. And there will also be extra time at the end of the presentation to answer any questions that you have. Okay, so the next opportunity is open juried. So we usually have three, but this year we're offering four um, open juried exhibitions. And this means that it's an opportunity that's open to non-NHAA members. 
Um, so we have the Omer T. Lassonde, which is currently on view. Um, we have, and then coming up in July, we have our New England Printmakers exhibition, which is going to be juried by um, Parker Potter. Um, so if any of you are printmakers or have experimented with printmaking and want to, you know, throw your hat in the ring, I recommend that you do that. We also have the Jack Parfit, which is our photography only exhibition. Um, that happens every August. And the Joan L. Dunphy exhibition, which is another all medium exhibition that happens in November. Um, so for these, um, we really try to, uh, to get some really high level, amazing jurors to take a look at your work um, and to put together some prestigious shows at the NAJA. And, you know, for as an example, for the Lassonde, we had 269 entries. And of that, 66 were chosen. So it's, they are very competitive sometimes, but it's also only one person's perspective. So I always encourage artists to participate because it is like a little push from our member exhibitions. But at the same time, don't be discouraged if you don't get accepted. It's just one person's perspective. And, you know, sometimes it's worth taking risks like you already have just to become an NHAA member. Um, so this one, and this is particularly relevant because the changeover, um, and that's another term that we use when we're taking down the current exhibition and um, getting ready for the next one. So for our changeover for small works is coming up, it's going to be May 1st and 2nd, and I'm going to show you how to apply for that. But this is an, a year round opportunity. We usually do it in three month chunks, um, except for uh, November, December, that's a two month chunk. Um, and it's open to all members. There's no juror and there's no fee. Um, and there's no theme. You're allowed to submit one framed piece. It doesn't have to be framed if it's a canvas that is finished on all sides. And we have recently made it available for three-dimensional artists as well. Um, the size limitation is up to 16 inches and that includes the frame. So if you do have something that's matted or with a, you know, a large frame on it, it needs to fit within that size limit. Um, it also has a price cap. And the idea for this is that, um, especially in our peak season in the summertime, when we have tourists coming in, we want something that will fit in their suitcase that will be, um, you know, something that they don't have to think too hard about purchasing. Um, and in addition to the framed piece, when you submit to Small Works, you can also have five bin pieces. And the commission on this is 60-40. And 60-40 for these group exhibitions is pretty standard. Um, at the NHAA, the, the only time when that changes is really when we have either one of our offsite um, or our rentals. So we'll get into rentals, I think, are on the next slide. So our offsite, and like I said, we are growing. We've had we have the Concord Chamber of Commerce. Um, the League of New Hampshire Craftsmen at Sunapee, um, and the Prescott Park Sheaf Warehouse in July and August, Creative Framing Solutions in Manchester, um, the Dover Art Center, and coming soon, it hasn't been released yet, is um, a new space in Derry, which is going to be at the LaBelle Winery. And so especially if you're, um, whether you're, you know, starting out or you're an established artist, what's really great about these offsite opportunities is that when you're, when you're building your artist CV, you can say you, that you've exhibited at all of these individual galleries and it can really start building up your representation around the state. Um, also, since we're a statewide organization, this is important to us, and that's why we've been growing so much in this direction is because we want to make it with not everyone lives on the seacoast, not everyone lives in Portsmouth, and this allows um, our various artists to participate at a location that's more convenient to them as well. And this is our, ex so we also have the exhibition proposal series. So this right now is mostly based at our Portsmouth Gallery. Um, and 
every year, usually in the fall, we'll put out a prospectus for this and we'll ask you to submit a proposal. So in the proposal, we're looking for your concept about your, your proposed exhibition, um, the medium that you're using, the type of work that you're showing, is it abstract, is it um, representational, is it all on a theme? Um, and you are allowed to collaborate with other artists. So sometimes we've seen some great pairings between 2D artists and 3D artists, or you know, photographers and painters, um, just to provide some variety in the exhibition. Um, we also have portfolio racks and pedestals available. And for this, the main difference is that there's an 80-20 split. And the reason for that is because um, as part of, you know, if you are selected as part of the exhibition proposal series, then um, you are sort of, you, you pay a rental fee and the fees vary based on the gallery. So our, you know, sort of the, the, the largest and um, the largest spaces are East Gallery, which is the, the front gallery that has the large window in it. And in that space, that's um, $500 for the month. Um, and then it goes down from there. We have walls available for as low as $60 a month. And then, um, you know, you could have the South Gallery for, I believe, $300. Fraser is $320. And an individual wall within those spaces is usually in the, like, $130, $160 range, depending on which one it is. So we have a, a variety of pricing on that. And new this year, um, for 20, well, really, I should say for fiscal year, because our, our fiscal year is from May um, until next May. Um, so the D. Pratt Framer Artist Opportunity Fund. So if you are interested in participating, but you, um, you know, you have some financial difficulty or you, you know, for whatever reason, the rental fees are not accessible to you. We have um, a scholarship that is funded by D. Pratt Framer, their frame shop located in Kittery and Rye um, to be able to help, help you with those costs and to help fund your exhibition. Um, and that's something that is really exciting to be able to offer because between buying art supplies and framing for your exhibition and putting all of that together, it can get really expensive. And I'm, you know, this is something that, um, I was, I launched recently with Deep Pratt Framer, so I'm very excited about it. Um, and a lot of this will probably also be covered in another info session before we launch the prospectus, because it is a little bit more complicated than just regular, like uh, applying to a regular show. And there's a lot of pieces that go into it, such as um, your artist statement and things like that. And uh, we want you to be able to apply for this, but then also use the skills that you develop through participating in this program to apply for other opportunities at other galleries outside of our organization. So we, um, I like to put together sort of like a sample proposal so you know what we're looking for and then any other resources that will help make this easy. Um, and I have to say our website is, you know, one of the biggest resources for you in terms of how to enter an exhibit and also um, find out more about upcoming events on our, uh, that we're putting on. So I want to take you to our website now to show you a little bit about how to navigate where you can find things. So the first thing I thought was, um, let, I can show you how to apply for an exhibition. So the one that we have open right now is New Faces, which is for college students. So on our, you saw, I just clicked on that link. Whenever you see a black box like this on our website, it's, it's basically a hot link that you can click and it's gonna take you to another page. So, oops, sorry about that. So I'm going to just click on that. And here we go. This is the prospectus. Um, I know that on some screens, this can be a little bit small. So I will try to zoom in as much as I can. Um, but also the main things that I want you to take away from this aren't the specifics about this prospectus or this opportunity, but more how to access it. So you can take your time on our website and really kind of get plugged into what we have. 
So at the top of the perspective, sometimes they look a little bit different, but um, you know, we have the title, we have um, you know, a little about the exhibit. Here we have the eligibility, eligibility enrolled in the NH college or graduated within the past two years. If it's a member exhibition, it'll say, uh, you know, NHAA members. And if it's an open jury, it'll say, you know, usually um, all artists, member or non-member that live within New England. Um, because we focus on regional art, all of our exhibitions are open mostly to New England artists. Um, we also have the location. So occasionally, um, we're gonna have, we have them outside of the Robert Lincoln Levy Gallery, which is our main Portsmouth Gallery. Um, we've got deadlines, exhibition dates, opening reception, exhibit fees, and if it's pri if there are prizes or not. So our opening receptions are usually every first Friday from um, five to eight at the Levy Gallery. So you can definitely put that on your calendar. And then we start going into the artwork accepted. So this is just a sample, um, but some of these things are pretty standard throughout our, our exhibition. So we have uh, the maximum frame dimension is 48 inches. We will be having a large work exhibition in August that is, it's a member show that is for works outside of our maximum frame size. So that'll be for pieces larger than 48 inches. So we're pretty excited about that. Um, and then you'll see things like the, um, the presentation guidelines, which I will uh, go into things like the consignment. And then when we scroll down here, how to submit. So Art Call is a online entry system that we use for all of our exhibitions. And the images that you put on Art Call will also go on our website. So what I mean by that is just to go back to our website here, when you scroll down and you see over here where it says Shop Lassonde, this is our online gallery of our Lassonde exhibition. And all of these images, um, just click on the first one here, represent the, the work that's hung in the gallery. And so it's really important that when you are submitting images here, that you're using really high quality um, photos and images so that potential buyers who are looking at our website who might not even come to the gallery are accurately seeing what your work looks like. And then in this little description here, um, we have a space on Art Call for you to enter the dimensions, the price, but then also if you want to include, you know, how it's made or a little sentence or two of additional information um, to describe it again to someone who might not have the opportunity to go in the gallery. And I know it might seem surprising to you, but, and it was surprising to me, but over the last, um, you know, couple years since we've launched our website, it has been incredibly popular. And every single month we make sales from outside the state and we ship them to the buyers. So this is a great resource for all of our members when you're featured in an exhibition to be able to use this to share with your, um, with your followers. Now, I wanna get back to the new faces. Okay. So um, now if I click on here, a lot of these links are, are live and they're gonna take me to our art call page. So the art call is very similar to what's listed in the prospectus, but this is where you actually submit your work. So this is when after you have your images are, you know, you take your high res photos, you, you figure out what pieces you wanna submit to the exhibition, this is where you go. And we're, um, you can kind of, this will look a little bit different for you because you are not an administrator and you get a little bit of an administrative um, view, but you're gonna click this here, register and apply. And you're gonna come to this page, which is create a user account. Um, and if you've applied for our Lassonde or other exhibitions, then you'll have already created an account and you can hit log on. But for the new first time users, you're gonna to have to go through all of this and create an account. 
Um, once you do that, it'll be a similar looking page and it'll walk you through the requirements of typing in, you know, your name, your um, the title of your piece, your dimensions, the price, and then it will ask you to upload a photo. So um, something that I want to note about names is we record all of, you know, we record all of the information that you put into Art Call, and we also keep track of when you make your membership payments through the member portal. And um, it can be a little confusing for us sometimes if you use, uh, say, your, your, your given name is different from your artist name. So if you ever have something where, you know, maybe you use your maiden name or you have a, a nom de plume or something like that, please send Carol Van Loon and I an email about that so we can keep track of what your preferences are and also how we do the wall labels. So we had um, a couple of you have already renewed your membership not renewed, but sorry, uh, you know, paid your membership for your for the first time and make sure that that information is exactly how you want it. And also uh, because that is how you will be known from, you know, in our database and in our organization going forward. So I know uh, there's there's one of you specifically who decided to use all lowercase. And our when whenever you do something like that, we're going to assume that that was an intentional choice. So make sure that you do pay some attention to the way that you're putting your name in, in our system. Um, so back on our home page here, I'm going to click up here. And on your computer, I have a small screen, so it might not look exactly like this. But we have our, under this membership tab, we have um, our member portal. And normally, I was already logged in recently, so it automatically bypassed it. But normally, it will take you to an all white page that has a, a little bar in the middle that says, uh, that prompts you for a password with a little arrow. And so in that box, you would type in, I love art, all lowercase with no spaces, and then hit the arrow. And that will take you to this page, which is um, members only access. So right here at the top, we have our membership renewal. Um, for you, this is not a renewal, it's just your first membership payment. Um, and the way that you can pay that is to go down here to this drop down and select your membership status. And then you're going to hit renew, which will then, as I was talking about the, your artist name and all of that, that will give you this form to fill out. And then it'll um, prompt you to add it to your cart. And then a little cart icon will pop up. Maybe we should just go ahead and do it. Okay. so you can see how it works. Okay, and then now up here in my cart, you can see I have the $125. So I would then click on this and then hit checkout. And this will take you through just a very basic checkout form, just like any other online shopping experience. It asks you for your email, you put in your address and your payment, and then you hit confirm at the bottom there. So going back to the member portal, sorry, my cat doesn't like being locked out. I'm not sure if you can hear her scratching, but. <laughs> Okay, so this is our fall, uh, our fall recording of the new member orientation and the fall uh, PowerPoint, which you might, some of you might have already taken a look at. I, once we can upload this video, we will post it up here with the new, with the current um, PowerPoint that you're taking a look at. Um, we also use this member portal for payments. So if you were to apply for the Sheaf Warehouse opportunity, you would make your payment through the membership portal here. Um, we also have a lot of information here on how to, um, how to, you know, just how to exhibit your work, how to plan for your exhibit. 
We have our presentation and framing guidelines. So if you click on this, this is a separate link that will allow you to read through everything here. Um, and if you have any questions about this, I'd be happy to answer them either now or you know, I'll, let, I'll give you some time to digest it and you can reach out to me via email or even call me at the gallery. Um, we also have our exhibit agreement, which I do have some slides about this too that I'll go over with you. This is an important one to read. We ask all of our members to read through this and to print and sign it. And you can either email it to me or bring it to the gallery. Um, some of the important things to note here is that um, as your gallery representing you, we are, we are putting in a lot of work to make sure that buyers and collectors are seeing your work. So all of your the copyright for your artwork, of course, remains to you. But if you um, if you have an exhibition or you're, you have a piece that's on view and you have a buyer that comes and finds out about it through our gallery or through our website then we expect you to, um, even if the exhibition is closed, um, we expect you to pay us commission on that. And this goes into, into that. And part of why we do this is because, you know, we're a small nonprofit organization and we want to serve you. And our art sales are a big part of how we get compensated and how we are able to do the work that we do to represent you. Um, we also put a lot of effort into all of the publicity and the marketing, um, just maintaining our website and all of that. So that's really what you're paying for when you're paying for the commission. Um, okay, then we have our inventory labels. For every piece that you have that you display on the gallery, you need to have an inventory label. You can, for small works, it's best to print these out here. And this is actually a fillable form, which is really nice. So if you don't have great handwriting, you can just fill it in like this. And so for example, about the name thing, you know, you want it to be listed as you want it listed on your label. So I could get lazy and I could write, you know, uh, it's a shawl. And when I look at that, that means you want your label on the wall to say a shawl. So make sure that you do take some time with these to present your, your name and all of your information as you know how you want it to look. The phone number is also very important. You want to put the best number to reach you because when we have when we make a sale, the first thing that we do is we call the artist to notify them. So we would love for you to have this be, you know, your cell phone or if you prefer your landline or something, wherever you want to be reached. Um, we will call and we'll leave you a message or hopefully we'll get to um, congratulate you and, you know, and let you know of, of things like of your art sales and things. Um, then we have our exhibition calendars. This, these are tentative and some of these do need to be updated a little bit, um, but this will give you an idea of what we have going on in the main gallery, the East Gallery, the South Gallery, and the Fraser Gallery. Um, the main gallery ones are, are very important because they have the themes. So for example, in July, we have the member show, which is Melt. So be thinking about what you want to submit for that. And in September, we have Colors of Autumn. Uh, then we also have exhibition calendars for other spaces here. And then these are some of the videos that I was telling you about. So we have this video on how to have a successful solo exhibition, which is a panel of a uh, few of our NHAA members talking about their successes and their marketing strategies and things like that. Um, we also have uh, Framing 101. So before I was the gallery director for NHAA, I was a master certified picture framer. And had uh, so I did a little presentation on, on framing for you there. Also on the member portal, we have information about volunteering. I recommend that you all take a look at the gallery handbook, which will include some very important information. And just to show you what one of our sign up genius pages looks like, um, 
this goes through some of the the volunteer opportunities that we're looking for. So we have uh, here on May 6th, from four to six, we need an opening helper. So this is someone who's gonna help us with the opening reception, setting up tables, pouring wine, counting visitors. And then we're looking for the same from six to eight. This is kind of the opening shift versus the closing shift. Then we have gallery sitting. And if you scroll down to here, May uh, 13th from one to 2.30, we have volunteer training. So this is for you. This is for anyone who has not um, volunteered at the gallery before, but would like to uh, jump into that. We do an hour and a half training where we'll show you how to use our square reader, how to process sales on the website, how to greet visitors. We'll give you an in-depth tour of where everything is in case you need anything. And it's really fun and it's a great way to get involved. Um, especially, you know, being a volunteer in gallery sitting is especially important if you are exhibiting your work, because our buyers and collectors love to have those conversations with, um, with the people who make the work, which is you. So the more time that you can spend in the gallery while you're having an exhibition or even just some work on view is really, really helpful. And we've noticed a huge difference between the artists who gallery sit and their sales numbers versus the artists who don't. Um, so I definitely recommend coming to this volunteer training here. Um, and the handbook is just a great way, you know, I always recommend that people print this out, or if you need a copy, just let me know ahead of time and I can print it for you in the gallery. And it goes over all of the basic things about how to open the gallery, close it, what to do, how to make a sale, all that good stuff. So this is a great place to start. And if you print this out, then you can make your own personalized notes on it. So then you can kind of have that as your, as your hard copy to, um, to put anything that will help you understand the material better. And the small works prospectus. So this is very relevant because as I mentioned before, the uh, changeover dates here are actually coming up very soon. And if you look on this calendar, we have the May through July, which is one of, you know, that's kind of peak season. So it's a great time for you to jump in and get involved. If you have any small pieces that are under 16 inches and that you're willing to price under 300, this is um, a really great opportunity. So the drop-off dates are May 1st and 2nd. Our drop-off date um, timeline is usually um, always the last, and sometimes it ends up being the first, Sunday, Monday of the month. And on Sunday, the hours are four to six for drop off or pickup. And on Monday, it's nine to six. And if you ever need, you know, we can, if you work or if you have another commitment, you're going away on a trip or something like that, we can always try to accommodate you. You just have to reach out and contact us. Um, myself and Carol Van Loon, but you know, we are such a small team at the NHAA that whoever you talk to will be able to help you. Um, so as long as you make prior arrangements, we can usually um, try to accommodate. Excuse me, Amanda? Yes. This is Sarah. If um, I wanted to submit a small works, would I need to print this out first and then submit it? Or can I bring this when I submit? You bring this when you submit. So okay. what you would do is you would print this, print this off, and then um, you would hand, I don't know if this one's fillable, so you would hand write in here the title of your framed piece, I the see. medium, the price, and then hopefully, you know, this part, the date sold, that's, we fill that part out in the gallery. Um, <laughs> and then we have the plastic wrapped, which is bin work. So if you, this, usually we don't allow G clays. But this is one of the few opportunities that we do allow for reproductions, or if you do have works on paper. The big thing is we don't want small canvases that are wrapped. You know, it, it's not preferable. Um, if it's a masonite panel, that's, you know, something thinner than a quarter of an inch. Um, that is allowed in the plastic wrapped section. Um, but Typically, the, you know, those canvases can get damaged when people are rifling through with all the other things in there, and we don't, we don't like to see that happen. Um, but if you have any um, specific questions now, happy to answer, or if you get one later as you're thinking about what you want to submit, 
you know, definitely reach out and I'd be happy to get back to you about that. Um, you can also see the other dates here, August uh, through October. Oh, yeah. Man, sure. interrupt, it's Michael Wallach. Okay, Amanda, oh, thank you for your help. Uh, should something sell from that small workspace, are we allowed to submit another piece during the month that, or two months that things are up? Absolutely, yes. Um, for small works and for all of our member exhibitions, um, you are allowed to replace it. And okay. um, I'm seeing in, this is kind of, I'm seeing if there's like a line of that on the prospectus, but. Um, there is, it says it in the prospectus. It says you can replace if it's sold. Yes. <clears throat> I forgot what page I saw it on, but it was on that. Um, yeah. Yeah, right here. The customer may take the artwork okay, right with them there. at the time of the sale and artists will be asked to replace it with comparable work. And, and does that include exhibits outside the small works as well? It includes member exhibitions and small works. So if it, for example, at the gallery right now, we have um, the Lassonde, which is an open juried exhibition. So because the juror selected those specific works to be part of the exhibition, you would not, if a piece sold, we would ask the buyer to leave it up for the duration of the exhibition and we would not allow you to replace it. Um, but if it's a member exhibition, which as a juried member of the NHAA, you're allowed to submit one or two pieces for all of those exhibitions. And someone during the summer, for example, June and July, we're having two back-to-back -back member shows because those are the high season. So it's a great time for you to participate. Um, so June, the theme is Wayne Venu, which is welcome. And uh, in July, it's melt. So if you sold a piece from either one of those exhibitions, you would be able to come in and replace it. The reason why we have it, we say here, comparable work is because we have it mapped out as to the size and the colors of the piece that has sold. So we ask you to be sensitive to that just so that the exhibition still looks right, if you will. Um, so if you had a vertical piece in an exhibition and then you came in and you replaced it with a larger horizontal piece, we might not have the same space available to you for that, in, for that slot of where we hung it. Um, so that's sort of what we're, that, that's the reason why we put that in there and that's kind of what we're working with there. Um, so if you were to submit to Small Works, you would print this out You'd fill out all the information with your name, your mailing address, your phone number. Um, we would ask you to pay special attention to the titles, the medium and everything, because this is what we are gonna be using to generate your labels. Um, and then in addition, um, you would go to the inventory labels here. Uh -huh. And you would print this out or fill this out on the online here um, with, again, your name, your phone number, your email. And then we put instructions up here to punch a hole and attach with string to the wire on the back of your work. Um, if you don't have a hole puncher and you don't have any string handy, we do provide that in the gallery when you come in to drop off. But it does make a big difference and it's quicker for you, especially if you're trying to take advantage of the 15 minute parking to parking spots in front of the gallery to fill, have all this information filled out before you come. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, of course. So let's see what else is in here. Um, as you spend more time in the gallery, you'll get a better idea of what the different rooms are called and what it looks like. But if you haven't spent a lot of time and you're curious about things like that, this is a great way to, um, to take a look at the floor plans. So this is the East Gallery with the window and we put a bunch of information in here. And this is really helpful when you're planning your solo exhibitions or your body of work. Um, that's part of the uh, exhibition proposal series that we talked about. Um, and let's see, there's other ones on here. Okay. 
And we so we also have the Concord Chamber of Commerce um, prospectus on here. This right, a lot of these are really full. So we have over, you know, so now with you, with everyone here included, we have about 325 artist members. And whenever we release these opportunities, they really uh, get snapped up. But you guys are coming on at a perfect time because not only do we have small works, we also have all the member exhibitions that I mentioned. And um, we also have the Sheaf Warehouse, which we just recently released and we still have plenty of room for everyone who wants to participate in that. And the dairy space that we, that um, has yet to be announced to all of the members yet. You guys are getting a little bit of a sneak preview through this new member orientation tonight. And then if you wanted to get really dig deep into NAJA stuff, we have all of our bylaws, um, materials from our annual meeting here, which we will be having our, um, our 2022 annual meeting also via Zoom. And I believe the date for that is May 19th, but you will receive some information about that in the coming weeks. So I'm gonna go back to my, uh, my slideshow unless anyone has any other questions about the member portal or how to navigate that. Okay. So this is just a, a, a little general framing guidelines thing. I showed you where that information was on the member portal, but because we use the Walker rod system, we really want you to use D rings and a, a nice wire um, sometimes we, uh, we see things like this that are just not professional. And that's, that's the thing is, you know, we're all professional artists. And if this is new to you and you would like more information, um, you can go back to the member portal and watch the Framing 101 um, Zoom class to give you some, some more pointers on that. Um, and the same, you know, generally we're not looking for anything crazy in terms of framing and presentation, just clean, simple, professional. And if you're ever worried about something that may or may not qualify, you can always snap a picture and email it to me or bring it in and we can have a conversation about it. I also showed you a little bit about the exhibitor agreement um, and, you know, you retain your rights. Oops. Um, you set the price. But you know, during the exhibition, we are the exclusive agent for sales. And um, if a buyer discovers the artwork during an exhibition and the sales completed within six months after the end of the exhibit, we are entitled to a commission. And I urge you just to think, think about it as, you know, we are your marketing team, your PR team, your support system, and uh, we need to, be able to cover our operating expenses in doing that. And this is a list of all of the upcoming exhibits. So um, this slide, I think, might, is probably the most exciting for all of you, because as you know, we've already talked about small works. Um, we have the June exhibition where you're allowed to submit one or two pieces. In addition to that, we have a joint member exhibition at the Art Center, which is one of our satellite gallery spaces in downtown Dover. Um, it has been incredibly successful, especially in terms of art sales for our member artists who have been exhibiting there. And this is um, just a way of celebrating the partnership and the collaboration we have through this joint exhibition, which is called Come Together. Um, then we have the July where another two pieces um, the open juried printmaking exhibition that I mentioned. And uh, we have Sheaf, LaBelle Winery, and all, all the other good stuff. If you're a photographer, then keep August in the back of your mind for the open juried photography exhibition. So the way that you usually get notified about all of these is, you know, definitely check the website and check the member portal. But uh, the NHAA staff team will send member emails and our member emails have attachments of the prospectuses and they also have links to the website. 
So definitely pay attention to your email. And I recommend that you add all of our email addresses to your um, to your contact list or to your address book so that you no, no, nothing goes to spam because it's always heartbreaking when someone was really excited about participating in something and then they miss the email and therefore miss the deadline. So don't let that happen to you. Add all of these email addresses to your address book and then you'll be able to, you know, you'll see all of our emails and you don't have to worry about it going to spam. And like I said, we are a really small team here. So, you know, definitely see me as your first point of contact, but I might uh, forward your email to another team member. Carol Van Loon is our exhibition coordinator. She's also a longtime NAJA member. She served on the board of directors. Um, you know, a, a few years ago, and she's, you know, a great wealth of information in terms of the history of the organization. And she has an amazing eye when it comes to hanging and setting up the exhibitions. Brooke Lambert just started. This is her second week working at NHAA. So she's going to be in charge of the Sheaf Warehouse exhibition, and she'll be sending out a lot of Sheaf related information. Um, she's also in charge of managing our social media, and she's um, currently getting onboarded in terms of taking over the website management. Um, and Suzanne Laurent, she writes all of our press releases and she um, gets them out. We usually get really great press coverage on um, portsmouthnh.com and Seacoast Online. We've had, um, you know, Sunday articles printed in the Portsmouth Herald. Um, and that's another reason why I always say, you know, we are your marketing team, we are your publicists. So, and if all that, if all else fails, you can always send something to our general email, which is checked by several different staff members, and we'll make sure to get back to you. And that pretty much concludes everything. So, um, I'm going to stop my screen share. And if we wanna have a conversation about uh, being able to introduce ourselves a little bit and also ask any questions that you might have about anything that I presented today, please please jump right in. I have a question. On all the, those uh, exhibitions coming up, um, are you gonna send out emails ahead of time? Yes. So, um, you know, I, I can't believe it's already Thursday. The weeks are going by so quickly. But within the next few weeks, um, we've already sent out Sheaf, the Sheaf information. So I will send a special email to all of you about Sheaf. Um, I That's already small works. Is that uh, a small work? No, Sheaf is a Sheaf is uh, a. It's an old historic boat shed in Prescott Park. And it, during the summer months, the NAJA rents it and turns it into a member exhibition. So over the course, yes, over the course of the summer, there's over 20,000 visitors who walk through the Sheaf Warehouse. And as, you know, as NAJA members, you are allowed to submit one to two pieces that are, you know, to be hung on the wall, uh, 10 bin pieces, and 20 note cards. And I cannot tell you enough about what an amazing opportunity this is, especially if you have any sort of New Hampshire or Seacoast regional scenes, the work just flies out of the warehouse. Um, and the Prescott Park Arts Festival is located right next door to the Sheaf, where they have live music, they have um, plays, they have tons of events. Uh, they also have a beautiful garden that's free to the public. So there's constantly visitors and tourists walking through there all summer long, which it is a great opportunity for NHAA members. So if you have any other questions, once I send you the prospectus and you read through it and you have a like, oh, is this acceptable? Or should I submit this type of a thing? Or I don't have 20 note cards. Is it okay if I bring you 12? Happy to answer all of those questions. The big thing about Sheaf is that because as you saw our staff page, it, it, we are so, um, we're such a small but mighty team. Uh, we rely on volunteers. So we ask every participating artist to volunteer for five shifts in order to participate in Chief. And if you can't spend time gallery sitting, then you can't participate. 
but it's very affordable. It's not expensive. It's I think $35 to submit two pieces of art for the entire two month exhibition. And that's non-juried, correct? Correct. But so um, I me. would say, sorry, there are some size restraints because it is a, um, the panels that we have uh, they can only accommodate artwork of a certain size. So that is listed in the prospectus. So definitely pay attention to that. Size, does that always in include frames? Yes. Um, I have a question about, uh, um, Martha Reeves, I have a question about photographing work. Um, I have a picture file of work. A lot of the artwork that I have in my, in my picture file was taken with my phone. Um, I, you know, and I, I'm like technologically challenged. So I do have Photoshop, but I'm, um, I, is there any support for, um, you know, artists wanting to improve the quality of their photographs or get some kind of um, feedback on the, the existing quality of, of the photographs of my work? Absolutely. Um, and there's a couple answers to that question. So um, first off, generally the, with the quality of iPhones and some of the higher end smartphones today, you can really get away with using a phone camera to photograph your work. Um, using a program like uh, Google Photos is free and it's very user friendly and simple. There's also programs as like Photoshop, which is kind of one of the gold standards in terms of photo editing. Mm -hmm. So there are a range of different techniques and different ways that you can um, you can approach it. The thing that is difficult when you're um, submitting via art call is that we are looking for very specific pixel range mm -hmm. and. Uh, Photoshop or is a great way to be able to edit your image size to the specific pixel requirements. Um, whereas some, a program like Google Photos is great for cropping your images. It's great for adjusting the brightness and cataloging your art images. You don't have as much specific control over things like the pixel size. So. Mm -hmm. Um, Carol Van Loon, our exhibition coordinator, is also our art call expert, and she's a photographer herself. So in terms of support, this is where, you know, especially as new members, you know, we want you to take advantage of all of these opportunities. We want you to, to participate. We don't want you to be intimidated. So, you know, we will walk you through it generally over the phone. Um, we'll arrange a time because we are very busy. So having some setting up an appointment is always really better for us. So then we can dedicate the time needed to walk you through the process. Um, and we'd be happy to do that with you. I also know that there are a lot of people who are in your same shoes that are current NHAA members or aspiring. And so to me, uh, as, the, as the gallery director, that means I'm like, hmm, I should probably do another Zoom class that shows you how to use those tools. Mm -hmm. So definitely look out for that in the future. It's not, you know, it's not in our member portal right now, but it is something that we are aware of and that we are going to be working towards. Great, thanks. Yeah, of course. Are there any other questions or anyone just want to say, hey, my name is and I'm a photographer, oil painter, printmaker, what have you? Hello. Hi, Amanda. It's Sarah. I'm sorry, um, but on my Zoom, on the, my screen, it shows On Point Investigations, and that's my husband. So my name is Sarah St. Cheney. Very excited to meet everybody and see everybody's art. So that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Welcome. So excited. Thank you. To have excited. You. <laughs> Hello, I have a few questions. My name is Todd Diesel. Go ahead, Todd. Yes. Um, what is the length of time for the uh, volunteering or sitting for the shift gallery? Um, they, we, for the, uh, you mean the sheaf warehouse or just in yes, general? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So for the sheaf warehouse, the shifts are usually three hours to three and a half. Um, and we split those into, we usually have two volunteers per shift and there's two shifts per day. Now, if you're coming from far away 
and you would like to uh, have two volunteer shifts done in one day, we totally understand and encourage you to do that. Um, so if you if you wanted to break it up into you know two days where you're working four shifts, um, plus may maybe you help at the at the setup or the pickup with the changeover, and you you volunteer for that shift, that would be an easy way to do it. If you if you live in a in a place around the state that's a little further away. Okay. Um and you provide, we have a website. So uh, would we have a, our website link uh, on the New Hampshire website as well? Yes, that is something that we offer. But right now, as I, as I mentioned, Brooke, she's in her second week as our website manager. So some of those, like the, the member directory, that's, you know, we're trying, it's unfortunately the start of our busy season. So it is a priority, but it is not our number one priority. So it might take a couple weeks or maybe even a month or so before we can really get our member um, directory, directory fully updated with all of our new members. So please be patient with us on that, on that side of things. But in the meantime, if you want to share your website link um, or any of your social media handles, we'd be happy to start posting and publicizing your work that way um, while we're working on um, sort of fine tuning our website. And um, we have used uh, for hanging our paintings, screw eyes and wire on the back of our paintings. Is that acceptable with your hanging method or do we need to change that out? Uh, we prefer D-rings just because the screw eyes, depending on where they're placed on the back of your frame, can end up scratching the wall and hanging further, having the painting hang further off of the wall. And the hanging system that we use is the walker rod system, which already has the paintings a little bit further away from the wall just based on the, the, the mechanism itself. So we find that D-rings and, and even D-rings that are like a little bit tighter, like the wire being tighter than you normally would if you're hanging it on the wall with a J-hook tend to work better in our gallery. Thank you. Sure. Anything else? Um, I'll introduce myself and then I have a quick question of my own. My name is Jackie Hansen. Um, I'm about to graduate with my Bachelor of Fine Arts from the Institute of Art and Design in Manchester. Um, and I was juried in for pastel art. Um, I actually have two questions now that I realize. Um, I was juried in for one medium. Am I allowed to submit work for exhibitions in other media? That's a great question, and that is one of the main benefits of the NHAA is that we really encourage artistic exploration, so we don't hold you to one medium. So just because you showed our watercolors or pastels in your case, it doesn't mean that you have to only show that medium with us. Um, if we do find a problem with your work, whether it's because it's not up to our professional standards or we don't think the quality is there, we will reach out to you and have a conversation. Um, but in most cases, as long as the, you know, your, your technique and your mastery of the medium transcends into the other things that you're experimenting with and, and using, then we are going to be delighted to, to show your work. All right, excellent. That's great to hear. And my other question was just, as a Lakes Region resident, I find con the Concord location most accessible. Are there any volunteer opportunities available there? Um, there, that's a good question. Um, currently, we don't have a huge volunteer program there, but we do have virtual volunteer options, and there's definitely ways where um, we can we can get you um, tapped in. I would say right off the bat, um, if you do want to exhibit in Portsmouth and you're coming to drop off your work, what we normally do is we have changeover volunteers who help with. Um, the checking in other artists work and checking out the work in terms of signing the consignment sheets for artists drop off and pick up. And since you're already going to be coming to participate in an event like that, um, it's kind of like you're killing two birds in one stone because you're dropping off your work and you're doing your volunteer shift, which is usually for those like three hours. And then you can be kind of 
off and on your way. So those shifts are very popular with our volunteers because so many people live in different regions. So I would just say, um, you know, when I release those volunteer calendars and you know you want to participate, jump in, jump in there when you can. Um, but also we can have a conversation outside of this where we talk about what some of your skills are and what things that you're interested in helping an HAA with that maybe you could even do virtually. All right, thank you. Yeah, of course. Anything else? Go ahead, hey. Cheryl. Oh, sorry. <laughs> hi. I just want to say hi, I'm Cheryl. And it's nice to be here and meet all of you. We're so happy that you're here. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I have a question um, about uh, the content of the work. Um, I do a lot of figures. Are you like, will the gallery like accept like nudes in their gallery? Absolutely. Yeah, we don't um, we don't really have any censorship uh, things. We do. We, we are exclusionary of work that is hateful um, or discriminatory of other groups of people. So if they're you know, we don't we, they, it happens very rarely. But if there is something that could be perceived as um, as harmful or hurtful uh, or discriminatory discriminatory um, against a certain group of people, then we would not allow that. But nudes, um, sexuality, things like that are completely, completely fine. I'm curious, uh, does the hanging group need assistance for yes. installation? And, and is it a large group? Is it a small group? I mean, is it, how is the installation done? Yeah, that's a great question. So I believe we have around 12 members who are signed up as part of the hanging committee. And um, because we have exhibitions every month, we don't expect every single member of the hanging committee to be available for the for hanging during changeover. And because of that, it it allows some freedom. So, you know, you might be a part of the hanging committee and you might be, you know, away for the winter, um, but you're there during the summer. And so you can participate and help during those times. Um, and because of that, having a larger group works out really well to fill in those gaps with everyone's availability. Um, we have, we kind of divide it into the two days, which is the Monday, the Sunday, well, no, the Monday and the Tuesday. So drop off and pick up is on Sunday and Monday. So come Monday afternoon, the arrange part of the hanging committee comes in and starts taking a look at the work and starts organizing it based on color size and creating pairings. And then on Tuesday, we start at nine in the morning uh, usually it can be earlier than that, to be honest. Um, and the hanging and then the arranged committee will take a look at um, do a final sweep of the work and then kind of set the plan in motion. And then there's the hanging the hanging side of, of the committee who um, are, are great at, you know, moving the lights, getting the level out, making adjustments to things as necessary. Um, and the walker rod system does make it very easy because we don't have to patch or paint walls most of the time. And um, it's very user friendly. Thank you. Yeah. All right, well, I think we should wrap up and, um, you know, again, reach out to me, call the gallery, send me an email. I'm here to help you. We are so excited to have you. And I'm really looking forward to seeing your work in the gallery. Um, and if even if you can't participate right away because you're busy, please come in and, um, you know, spend some time at the openings, uh, introduce yourself to me, um, just because I meet so many people and it might take me a minute to remember all of your names. And once I see your artwork, I'll be able to make a better connection. Um, but then I would love to be able to introduce you to some of the other artist members or connect you with people that are part of our organization who I think, um, you know, would really your work resonates or, you know, you can have you'd be a nice network to start developing. 
So thank you so much, everyone. Have a great night. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.